It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Adam Dworsky, who has now been named the new head coach of the Silo Rebels boys basketball team. Coach, congratulations on the new gig. You just make it back into the States from playing professionally basketball in Europe. And how did this opportunity come around? Talk about talk to us about that. Yeah, thanks, Joey. Thank you for having me on. Um, first of all, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's been it's been quite the the couple of weeks to say the least. I got back to the States um, about two weeks ago, um, finished my playing um, season. I was in Montenegro this year in the southern part of Europe. We just finished up our season. And then um, pretty much as soon as I landed in the States, um, the, the, this opportunity of, of being the, the head boys coach at Silo kind of presented itself. And it, I was immediately interested. And so um, from that point, things started kind of moving really quickly from um, interviews to just kind of kind of going through the whole process. And um, so, yeah, in the span of, of, you know, once I got home, it was three or four days later where it was really starting to get rolling. And it was just such a good opportunity for me. I feel like one that um, I didn't want to pass up. It's a program that has been good for many years and in recent years uh, up near the top. And uh, I have to ask if, if coaching has always been a part of the life plan for you. It has absolutely. Ever since I started, really since I was like a freshman or sophomore in high school and I started playing, um, you know, high school basketball. Um, it was just something that I really, really wanted to do and really saw myself doing one day. And I think knowing that from an early age helped um, kind of my development, not only as a player, but kind of, I've, I feel like I've already kind of started developing coaching habits um, throughout the years, just paying attention to the details that my high school coach and my college coach would put into um, the day-to-day -day, um, life. And so, yeah, I, I always knew I wanted to do it. And I think um, knowing that early on really helped me to get where I am today. And I feel prepared to uh, begin this journey. You're originally from, from Flower Mound, Texas, but you spent five years in the Southeastern Oklahoma area, of course, as a member of the Southeastern Oklahoma State University Savage Storm. How, how big is it then to come home, if you will, to this southeastern Oklahoma area. Yeah, so it's funny you say that. Whenever I graduated Flower Mound, I graduated from Flower Mound in 2017. And when I left Flower Mound, I, I thought that there was no way that I would ever love a place as much as I did Flower Mound. There was in, in the, over the course of my five years of Southeastern, that's exactly what I did. I, I fell in love with, with Southeastern. I fell in love with um, the city of Durant, the community, the people here. Um, I built so many great relationships over the years um, throughout the community, relationships that I still have to this day and, and relationships that I'll lean on as I start this journey. But that was one of the most appealing things to me about this job is just the, the opportunity to be back in this area where I'm so familiar, where I'm so comfortable, where there's so many great people. And I think that's one of the huge benefits of this job is just the, the culture, the sporting culture, the sport community, um, that Bryan County has. That's definitely something that I'm really excited about. We're visiting now with Adam Dworsky, who has just been named the boys basketball coach for Silo High School right here in Bryan County and in southeastern Oklahoma. And a former southeastern Oklahoma State University star, as a matter of fact, the 2022 Great American Conference Player of the Year. And Adam, I have to say, you're someone who seemed to be able to just make his way to the basket at will. And in decades now of broadcasting and, and coaching and, and seeing so many players, there are few that have that extra gear that you have. I mean, just to be able to, to, to get from one end of the court to the other and, and just get past people was amazing to watch. But, you know, even with your ability to score, you, you specialized in assists. And you're number five in Division II all-time on the assist list, top of the SE, the, the Southeastern uh, career list, top of the Great American Conference career list in assists as well. Talk about that part of your game. Yeah, that's that's the part of my game that I, I always took the most pride in. Um, I knew that probably my best attribute as a basketball player was just my ability to, to get by people on the dribble. And I saw that as a way – that I could really, I could really use that attribute to, to uh, serve my teammates and get my teammates open shots. And so, I feel like that was the one thing I was really good at. I could get by my guy and draw a help defender, 
And then I was lucky at Southeastern. We just had so many guys that could make shots all over the court. And so really all the credit goes to those guys. I mean, I had a lot of assists, but there's no assist without a made shot. And so just being in the right system, playing with the right guys, having the right coaches, all that played a role in it. But yeah, just, just trying to do whatever I can to help my team. And in a lot of games, I felt like it was just trying to get to the paint, um, put pressure on the defense and then kick out to guys and, and then they would make the shots. Well, I should tell you, you were fun to watch, honestly. Just absolutely, it was a privilege to get to watch you and, and the, the times I got to call your games as well. It was a lot of fun. You know, you were also an academic All-American too and a big part of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, specifically with Southeastern, I know for sure. Talk about how those things factor in, the classroom and, and the faith of the, of the young people. How does this factor into your coaching style? Well, I'll, I'll start with FCA. FCA, uh, I can't say enough about the impact that FCA had on me, um, especially when I got to college. I, I was lucky to have um, a couple teammates uh, when I got to Southeastern, Kevin Buckingham and Jet Job, guys like that. They kind of took me under their wing and uh, started bringing me to FCA. And FCA was just something that was that was a constant in my life during that time. We At Southeastern, we had our FCA meetings on Wednesday nights. And so... Every every single week of my college career, I knew that on a Wednesday night, uh, I could show up to the to the volleyball gym at Southeastern, and I could hear God's word. I could I could be in fellowship with with other athletes. I could build relationships and and just be really comfortable in that environment. And uh, through FCA, I built a lot of relationships with not only people from Southeastern but other people from Bryan County. Some people, um, you know, from Silo, Duran, Kingston, and, and from all over. And so. Um, I've just been so blessed with with how FCA has impacted my life, and I and I've I've seen firsthand what it can do for 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 an athlete, and so I'm looking forward to um continuing that and hoping to maybe instill that in my athletes, and then similarly, I think um, academics play a huge role in athletics too. Um, I've always again took pride in in trying to do my best in in the classroom and. Um, and I think that it's one of those things where how you do anything is how you do everything. I think in order to be a good athlete, in order to be someone that a coach can trust on the court, I think you need to be someone that your teacher can can trust in the classroom. I think it there, it you know it all kind of goes together. Um, you want to be on time. You want to show up. You want to be respectful. You want to put in the work in the classroom. Take care of what you need to take care of. And then if you do all those things, then on the court, your coach is going to trust you um, to make the big play late in the game. So I think it all kind of goes together in my eyes all right well it's going to be right around the corner I, I know you got the summer ahead of you and then the the new season with you at the helm at silo for the fans there of the rebels what what should they expect to see from an adam dworsky coach team they they should expect um a lot of tempo a pace up and down um not too dissimilar from what they saw from me playing um, at southeastern um get up and down the court a lot um Shoot, shoot a lot of threes, shoot the ball. You're going to see guys that are playing loose, playing freely, playing to their abilities. Um, on the defensive end, you're going to see guys competing. Um, you're going to see guys playing hard, laying it out there on the line for each other. Um, I think a lot of strategy and tactics will largely depend on, you know, the personnel. And at this point, I haven't really gotten to see a whole lot of, of what I have, and they haven't really gotten to see a whole lot of me. So I think the summer will be really big just in terms of familiarity, me getting to know the guys, the guys getting to know me and, you know, we'll be able to figure out, you know, kind of how exactly it's going to look, but regardless of, of who's on the team and, and how we play, um, I know that our guys are going to play hard. They're going to compete. They're going to battle for the, for the full 32 minutes. And then, and then we're going to play really fast. All right. Well, I, I listen again, it's been a privilege to get to watch you on the court and I look forward to getting to see you on the sideline as well. Adam Dworsky, the new head boys basketball coach for the Silo Rebels. Thank you so much, Adam, for taking time with us today here on the Summit. And, and we are going to follow you in, in the upcoming year. Success to you all this year. Yeah, glad to do it. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it.